All right, we're gonna tie my favorite little wet fly that I fish. This is my personal one. I know a lot of people have heard of Larry Bird's bird's nest, and it's usually a, like a bead-headed nymph. This is gonna be tied in a wet fly style. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're using a size 10 in this guy. And then we're gonna have some wood duck as the tail. And then we're gonna have some awesome possum as the body. And then some more wood duck for like a collar around it. And then this is Wapsie's Spiky Squirrel, I think is what it was called. I ripped the front off, so I don't remember exactly what it's called. But it's in Fox Natural. I just write, yes, don't pay attention. It's fine. Everything's fine. All right, so, and then we're also going to do a ribbing of the small oval Lagerton tinsel in gold. And I'm using Danville's 70 denier in like a burgundy color. First thing I do is I start my thread right about like two thirds of the way back. I run this all the way down to the point of the hook. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more. I usually tie this on an A-Rex FW530, but I forgot them at home, so we're improvising with this hook, which is also a great hook. I wouldn't stress the hook at all. This fly will fish just great on this hook, too. First thing we do is we tie in our wood duck, and we want it about half the length of the hook. Like so. Just run this up. Try to keep the, the body nice and pretty. Trim off the excess right there. Tie in our gold oval tinsel in small. On the bottom end, run it all the way back. Take a little thread wrap, sneak that down there. A little thread wrap right behind the tail. I get the oval tinsel where it's supposed to be. Keep that tail up just a little bit. All right, time for the awesome possum goes on first. I like the awesome possum for the body because it dubs on super nice. Really tight. As long as you don't bulk it up too much on the thread, it makes a nice little dubbing cord. Throw it up there. And just wrap it forward. And I like to make it look a little bit carrot shaped. I'm going to do a little bit more dubbing wherever I put it. There it is. Like so. And then take your ribbing. Just like so. About four to five wraps of the oval tinsel. And I wrap up on it. Okay, next part. I cut a little V in this wood duck. I just place it there. And about halfway down the tail, I pinch it. I do a loose wrap, another loose wrap, and then I tighten it down. Make sure everything kind of worked its way around. Trim off the excess. And it's going to kind of spin until you get it all locked in. That's fine. And then now that we've got it locked in, we work our way up it until we hit that dubbing, that dub body, like so. Next, this is pretty much the last part. We take that spiky squirrel dubbing in natural. 
and we're gonna make a little dubbing loop out of it. So on my desk, off camera, sorry you guys can't see this part. We're gonna pull it and kind of straighten out the fibers. Hope you can see that. We're gonna just lay it down on the desk. Make a dubbing loop. With this 70 denier thread especially, I like to double it. So I do two threads and I wrap around it twice. I rock this up to just like one eye length away from where the eye starts. Untwist my dubbing loop. Grabbing my yeah, dubbing spinner. Place that in there. Spin this up. Take my bodkin, pick it out. It takes a little bit to pick this up because it likes to really knot up on the thread. Just take your time, get in there. The more you pick it out now, the spikerier it'll be, and you get the excess out that isn't in the thread itself, which is nice because when then you lay it all down, what you laid there will stay there as you're fishing it. So it should look like that, and I just take my fingers and pull off everything that's loose. Let it just kind of fall for now, and I clean that up later. We just walk this forward. This is a super effective fly to fish underneath a dry fly on the McKinsey during the summer. It's probably my favorite fly to do that with. When you first start fishing it, it'll kind of float for a bit. And then as it gets fish, it'll just become your standard wet fly. You can swing it at the end, let your dry fly skate across. Right now I'm just building up a little bit of a head before I trim this off. I just like to do it since I already have it in my hand. Trim that off and then I whip finish. Perfect. And then take my bodkin again, wherever I put it. Pick this out. This fly is super buggy, super effective. I don't know what it mimics, probably anything that swims in the water. But the fish love it. A standard dry fly is going to be. Then I take my toothbrush, brush it forward, brush it back, brush it forward, brush it back. Try to get as many of those fibers free as possible. And then you can just seal the head with whatever you want. I have a little bit of UV glue right here. Take my bodkin again. This fly is super durable too. As it gets fished, it becomes more of a mess, which is even more awesome. So the more fish you catch on it, the better it fishes. I've caught fish on this fly with the dubbing loop destroyed and it just trailing around behind it. Sometimes it's just too lazy to change flies. The fish just love it the more gnarly and broken it gets. Sorry, I forgot to cover the light so I don't blind you guys. <coughs> and that's my version of the bird's nest. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy some fishing. If you catch anything on it, let me know.